you think that any of them were Mormon? I think you haven't got a clue what a Mormon doctrine is. If you did, you wouldn't think that any of them were the least bit contradictory to Mormonism. 7. What most valiant becomes a God system? There's no, there's no, such, there's no such word as valiant. Valiant? Do you mean valent? Valence? As in chemistry? No, I don't suppose so. From the context, I assume you mean valiant. In any case, I never heard of the system, so I could tell you. By the way, there's no such system in Mormonism unless you are talking about some doctrine you have designated by this ridiculous name. Your quotations of Psalm 90, 1 through 2, is much appreciated because it is clear. It clearly shows because it clearly shows that all men existing before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the or ever thou hadst formed the earth and world, ever even from everlasting to everlasting. Think, Ralph. A anyway, we did look up those verses, and it's it 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 doesn't sound like it's talking about us existing before the mountains were formed. It sounds like it's talking about God. At least to us, it sounds that way. Think, Ralph, how could he have been our dwelling place and our God if we didn't exist during the time period identified in the passage? It sounds like God existed, da da da, da and but that we are his, you know, fortress and all that. If he did not exist before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth was formed, I tell you, this really shows that you can be blind. Because I see it, my dad and I see it this a different way, and he sees it this way, so... Man. Well, one of us is blind, that's for sure. <clears throat> or maybe we're both blind in certain ways. Okay. If we did not exist before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth was formed, then the most the psalmist could have said was that he was our God, or our dwelling place, from the beginning of our existence. From the time we were born, or from the time Adam was created, which was quite some time after the mountains were brought forth, or the earth was formed, and certainly a long time after the everlasting. I never said I was going to be infinite someday. The Apostle John said it. First John 3, 2. We looked it up and it doesn't doesn't sound like that. But of course you don't you don't believe John, do you? Sorry, I forgot. You are of Paul. Of First Corinthians one twelve, right? Paul said, follow my gospel, yeah, I mean my, you know, thing. And if you follow Paul and you try to follow Christ, you see I mean James, you you see a big contradiction here. What on earth makes you think I could ever die on a cross someday? My dad was being facetious. He doesn't realize that. You keep asking that question, and you must surely know what I believe. Or do you believe in reincarnation? Do you know? Do you not know that we only live on earth once? Hebrews 9.27 I don't see any crosses in my future, at least not unless you get your way. Would you like to crucify me, Ralph? <laughs> the tenor of your letters suggests that you would. Oh, once I'm resurrected like Christ and my Father in heaven, I won't suffer any death. I won't, su I won't suffer death anymore. That's one part of what it means to conquer death. Surely you believe Christ did conquer death, both physically and spiritual. Both physical and spiritual. Ralph, Romans 4.14 refers to faith being made a void. If, quote, they which are of the law, unquote, can be heirs of salvation. What do you think the word means in that context? The Greek word could also be translated useless. The point is that faith would be useless if you could get into heaven through some legal technique. Faith in this context refers to the atoning sacrifice of Christ. I know you won't believe this because you have no grasp of Mormon doctrine. Oh yeah? But this scripture expresses Mormon teaching. The problem is, you are used to this emphasis, which has been placed on obedience in the church for in the church for years. This is because obedience is the hardest thing for most people, and also the church has emphasized it. As a result, many church members misunderstand the position of obedience to in soteriology. We are not saved by the obedience that we must learn. It is necessary, but by no means sufficient. 
Are you familiar with the co that concept in logic? I, f I frequently wonder where evangelical scholars learn their logic. You all need to take a course in Boolean algebra. He spelled it B-O-O-L-I-A-N. It's actually spelled differently, my brother found out. Uh, you, you all need to take a course in Boolean algebra. Then you could understand the difference between things that are mutually exclusive and things that are not, and things that are necessary but not sufficient alone, and things that are sufficient but not necessary. Part of the, quote, counsel of his will, unquote, Ephesians 1, 11, is that, quote, we should be in the praise of his glory, Ephesians 1, 12. We're not in the praise of his glory if we come to him other than of his own, of his own free will and choice. Uh, it says, with the man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. It also says, you can choose me or I chose you. No man can come to the Father unless the Father draws him. I don't know where he gets that. And that's not even Paul. I think that's John that said that. Huh. There's no free. There's no free will there. That he will ultimately persuade the vast majority of us to come to him in at least one of the kingdoms of glory. I have no doubt, but it will always be our own volition. God will not force anyone to accept him. What about you? Didn't choose me, but I chose you. And those who want to live with him must learn to obey his laws. Because he never forces us to follow him, he certainly can blame us. He is not to blame for your mistakes, Ralph. So you shouldn't sh think. So you shouldn't think he needs your forgiveness. <laughs> You're talking like an ancient Jew here. Read Ezekiel 33. That was what the Jews were saying, and the prophet was told to rebuke them for it. As far as you being a minister without playing on the hands, there is nothing in Mormon doctrine that says you must be ordained before you can minister to others, to be a missionary to others. Don't get too excited over being sealed, Ralph. That word simply means identified, that i.e. Uh, stamped with a seal. It is like being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can get erased, blotted out, very easily. All you have to do is stop fa having faith in him, i.e. stop obeying his commandments. And according to Hebrews 6, uh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 6, you'll never be saved again. Whether or not the Most High dwells in temples made with hands, as opposed to living in heaven, I read Acts 7.48 in context, Ralph. He did, in fact, order the Jews to build a temple, and he visited it, and required ordinances to be performed there. After Christ was crucified, the early church continued to observe temple attendance and, perform and performed ordinances there. Yeah, well, they might have, but does that mean that it was right? Acts 2.46, read it in context too, including baptism for the dead. Yeah. First uh, Corinthians 15.20, no, yeah, but that was when the dispensation was changing. People, you know. Do you believe the Bible, Ralph? Apparently not. Or, if you do, you're, you, you ignore a great deal of it. Certainly you make no effort to arrive at a theology that is consistent with all its passages. On your point, the cross is no big deal to Mormons. To Mormonism, you asked me to correct you if you are wrong. You are wrong. What makes you think I don't think? Thank God for the cross. You must think you are God if you think you know what I say to Him or don't say to Him in my prayers. <clears throat> yeah, what is the cross in Mormonism? If you have to save yourself, what's the point of it? That's what my dad was bringing up. Don't thank me for my book, Ralph. It's hypocritical, it's hypocritical of you. You're not grateful for it, and you haven't read it. That is a complete lie. My dad has read that thing from cover to cover to the point where it's fallen apart. He loves it, too. Boy, does he love it. Because it's given him something to read, and something to do. 
The fact that God does not vary does not mean that he is that that does not mean there is no change in him. Take, for example, the fact that Christ took on a physical body. Do you deny that he did? Don't you call that a change? Come on, Ralph. That's change, but it does not mean God has varied. The same is true of Christ receiving a spirit body. <laughs> Don't worry, Ralph. I won't be too busy. If I ever become like God, I'll be infinite, remember? I know what a theophany is, Ralph. It's a Greek concept formulated to rationalize biblical principles and teachings for per pertaining to the true nature of God. The word appears nowhere in the Bible and hence is not biblical by any stretch of the imagination, but I doubt that you care about that point as long as it supports your theology. I'm not, su I'm not surprised to hear you say that you would be unhappy with an infinite mind. Don't worry. Judging from your current direction in life, there's no chance of you ever getting one. So, if large-scale family life is not your thing, right, I think, uh, relax. You won't be having one. <laughs> it's interesting to know that you don't care about the Satan-type guy. That's not surprising, since you appear to be worshipping him. Isn't that what you said? Isn't that, isn't that what you said? You can run around with uh, other women, worship Satan, do whatever you want. Nothing you do will be imputed to you. He really thinks my dad is... <laughs> You're free. Whoopee. You can have that kind of freedom, Ralph. Don't include me in any of it. Thank you very much. I'll stick to my home teaching in the hope I can stretch my soul a little and refrain from coffee so my body stays healthy. What about... Red meat, huh? That's worse than coffee. You know, all that cholesterol. And tend the temple the way the early church did, so I can be close to God and feel his presence very near me. Mormonism is a restoration of the early church, not any of its early heresies. I assume you know that, but being completely deceived or a liar at heart, you, dece you decided to mischaracterize the restoration as you could laugh at it. And so you could laugh at it. Of course God really is God. What makes you think that precludes him from being a man? Not a lowly, lowly fallen mortal man, of course, but if that is all you can see in men, your vision is extremely limited. Remember, man was made in God's image. Does that mean nothing to you? Is that part of the Bible you would like to ignore? Oh, that's right. You only believe Paul, and that was written, and what, and that was written by Moses. I see. Now, thank you for your additional insight on First Peter three eighteen nineteen uh, four six. The spirits in prison are living according to God in the spirit because the gospel of being, the gospel is being preached to them. But perhaps one reason is it's it says they must be judged according to men of the flesh is that they did not yet have the temple work done for them. <clears throat> Only when the work is done, especially baptism for the dead, can they obtain justification for the sins they committed in the flesh. That is an interesting and new depth to the passage and that I missed before. Aha. <laughs> While we read that, it really sounds like God just Christ went down there preach, you know, and then led kept captivity captive, you know. Wasn't making them, wasn't baptizing for the dead, that sort of thing. Excuse me, Ralph, but do you have the same Bible as I do? In the Bible I have been reading, Christ has a body of flesh and bones, Luke 24, 36 through 43, and in that state he was said to be the express image of the Father, according to several passages from the writings of Paul. Would but what could be clearer? God the Father is exactly like Christ. When is that said to be true? After Christ is resurrected with a perfect, glorious, physical body of flesh and bones. Does two and two equal four, Ralph? In Mormonism, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are equal. However, Christ is in subjection to the Father. Or haven't you read the New Testament lately?